Hi, I'm Susan with Prairie Point Quilt and Fabric Shop here in Lenexa, Kansas, and I'm going to show you how to put the chenille blooming bias on a quilt for a binding. So the blooming bias for the binding is put on all four sides of the quilt um, in two different layers, and it's called chenille blooming bias. Um, comes in a lot of different colors, and it comes in two different widths. There's a 5 8 inch width and a 3 8 inch width, and they have different purposes, and I will be showing both of these as we go along. So I'm going to show you how to do the binding first, and then I will show you a couple other things that you can do with the chenille. It. Okay, the chenille blooming bias comes in these uh, bias strips, so it has a lot of stretch to it, and the way it works is that since these are cut on the bias, these edges aren't going to ravel um, as the the quilt is being used or as it's being washed or anything. It will fray up, but it won't unravel and look raggy. Um, so I'm going to put uh, a binding on this little baby quilt here using the 5 8 inch, and I'm going to use the yellow color. And the first thing you need to do when you're doing this is to trim up your quilt on all four sides with really clean edges to get rid of any fraying that may have occurred um, between the time of having it quilted and um, getting to this. So this one was sitting around for a while. I had to trim it up because it had frayed edges. And then you're going to uh, take it to the sewing machine and you're going to zigzag around the whole quilt on all four sides. And I, um, on this machine, I think I had about a 2.0 stitch length and a 3.5 width for the zigzag and that just gives it a nice finish so that the, the edges of the quilt don't ravel. You want your bias to um, fray but you don't want your quilt to. Okay so then what I'm going to do and what I'm going to talk to you about I did not create all this myself. I learned this from um, from others and from Nanette who has information on the internet about it and um, using some of her tips. So what I'm gonna do is cut my bias strip here and I'm gonna cut two layers of it. The width of the quilt, okay? And then I'm going to lay these together and I'm going to sew these two layers on the back side of the quilt. So I'll turn this over. And I'll lay it on here. And I'm going to take it a little bit more than an eighth of an inch past the edge. I'll trim it down to an eighth later. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the edges of the bias trim an eighth of an inch or so beyond the uh, zigzagged edge of the quilt. So you can see I have it extended a little bit past there. So I'm going to keep these two edges together and I'm going to sit down at the machine and sew these on. Okay, I have my bias trim laid on here and again it is a one eighth inch past the edge of my quilt edge there. I'm gonna lay this under my presser foot and this presser foot is about the same width as the bias. So I'm just going to center it right on there and that will make it where I'm sewing, right down the middle of the bias. Still going 1 8 inch past the edge of my quilt. And I have my needle centered in my presser foot. So I'm gonna start here, do a little back stitch. Stop, keep these together. Lay it so it goes about an eighth of an inch past the edge. And you can use a, just use a regular stitch length or you could go a tiny bit smaller. Okay, I'm gonna stop here and check it and see what it looks like on the other side. And you can see that there, it's looking pretty good so far. If you feel more comfortable putting some pins in it or doing some glue basting, uh, feel free to do that. But each time I stop, I line it up and I just take it 1 8 inch past the edge. All the way to the edge, 
relax it a little bit. There we go. Cut it and I'm going to trim it off one eighth inch past the edge that way. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is sew, uh, I'm going to sew two rows at the bottom of the quilt and then two rows on the side of the quilt. Okay, as I was sewing, I could sense that my edge was getting a little bit further than an eighth of an inch away from the quilt edge. That's okay, don't worry about it. I learned on my own that um, it isn't gonna make any difference once we're all finished with this. If you have any uh, seams in the bias, and you will, they're, they're throughout the bias strips. It doesn't matter if they're on the outside, in, tucked inside like this, or if they're on the outside. Um, again, when it's all done, you'll never even know that it's there. And just like I do when I do free motion quilting, um, I wear a glove to help get uh, control of my quilt. And I'm gonna put my glove on because the rubber tips on here help me to hold this. Otherwise it tends to slide away a little bit. Trim my threads and cut it one eighth inch past the edge. Now I'm going to do both sides the same way. Okay, I've got it all finished. Um, I, again, I will repeat what I did. So two rows of bias strip on the top and bottom of the quilt on the back side, two rows on each side on the back side. Then I'll repeat that whole process on the front. Again, I'll go to the top and bottom with two, two layers of this and then two layers on the sides. And um, the, your corners are gonna look like this with them extending a little bit past the edge there. And um, the next step is just to throw this in the washing machine and um, let it um, fray up. So um, I think what, um, what they call it is bloom. You'll watch it bloom. You can see I did not use a whole package of the chenille in here. I still have some left. And um, if you want to know how much it's going to take to use, then just measure all the way around your quilt. And then you, it tells you in here how many yards are in the package so you can determine if you have enough. But don't forget that you have two rows on the top uh, the front side and two rows on the back side. So that's two, four, six, eight, that's 16 um, rows of this that you've put around there, measuring it uh, that many times. Nice for a very feminine quilt, a baby quilt or something like that, but you don't have to use it for that. It comes in darker colors. If you wanted to use it for a more rustic type of look or something, you could do it with some, we just got some new, um, uh, yarn dyed wovens in. I think this would be pretty with something like that. You could do it on a reproduction quilt and I will show you um, a few other things. One more thing is the thread color. I have a, like a real creamy colored thread on here. I'm using on the yellow. It doesn't even um, show up or anything. And I, I wouldn't want to use black on here, but you don't have to be real super particular about your thread color. It's really not going to show. So let me show you a couple of the things that you can do with this. Okay, the first quilt I show you, showed you had white chenille it around it. Then I did yellow. This one has green. So you can just do any color that coordinates with the colors in your quilt. And it is a lot of fun. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that when you wash it in the washing machine, if it doesn't fluff up the first time, wash it again. Um, if you have a front loading machine, it might be, um, you might have a little more trouble getting it to fluff up the first time. Another hint is just to throw in a bath towel or two with it. That will help to give some abrasion against it and fluff it up. So there's, um, that's just another idea what you can do. Also, I've seen uh, pictures of quilts in which they've just kind of gone between the blocks and put it right down the rows of the blocks. So that's a fun idea. It's kind of what I did on here, this little baby quilt turned out very sweet. So I use, on this one, I use the 5 8 inch chenille it and I just have one layer on here. I think if I'd done two layers it would have fluffed up a little more but it still looks kind of cute this way. You could also just do the 3 8 inch chenille it on here and it would be very nice as well. So what I did here um, on my quilt top I uh, sewed this right along the seam lines of this entire quilt here 
And then I layered it with my batting and backing and then just did some simple quilting in here. So the quilting on here is just wavy lines going uh, across in one direction. You could quilt, uh, put your quilt together first and then put the chenille on it. Um, you just have more uh, weight to work with and um, it, it works just as well. The thing about doing uh, the chenille first and then quilting is it kind of cover goes over some of the chenille and it doesn't fray up quite as much as you might like it to. If you sew the chenille on with the layers of uh, batting and backing, then you will have the lines on the back side where you um, did that. So a couple options. You could have some, you could entirely quilt your quilt and then put it on, or you could do the layers and then do your own quilting as you lay it on. And your the lines that you sew for laying this on would be your quilting lines. Two different ways you could do that. Okay, another thing I wanted to show you is just to make a little pillow. Turned out real cute. Um, so in this case, what I did was sew some little uh, two and a half inch squares together using a mini charm pack. And then I would take this and I'm, um, lay it on um, the ironing board and place it on there. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to um, lay these on here on the seams. So I put this together and I'm gonna just take my chenille, lay it right there on the seam line and trim it off a little bit past it. And I'm gonna take this seam aligned glue. It's a real nice little glue that you can iron your, your fabrics together. And you're, I'm just gonna put a few dots on here all the way along the seam line. Like that. I'm gonna lay this on there. And then the way that seam aligned glue works to stick is to press it with a hot iron. I'm just gonna put a hot dry iron on there. If you use steam, sometimes the steam will, uh, is too much moisture and it will keep it from gluing. Put that right on there. And cut some more strips. So I'm just going to repeat that on all of the seam lines. Just a little dot, that's all it takes. Now, if you have a, a, like a sew line glue pen, that would probably work very well too, or maybe an applique glue that you would have. But I really like this seam line glue. If you put it on there and you don't like where it is, like maybe it turned out crooked or something, you just pull it off and start all over again. And there we go, it's stuck on there. Okay, so I'm gonna do that on all of these and then um, I will take it and then go across this way, the same way. And then I'm going to sew right down the middle of each of these. Just sew down the middle of each of them going this way and I'll put together my pillow, um, sew it with a backing on it. This one happens to have a zipper in it. And then after I put the pillow casing together, then I'll throw it in the washing machine and let it bloom that way. And then you can put it in a pillow and this put, so for this one, if you want to do it with the little mini charms, it's going to take two of these. I have them um, uh, six by eight uh, squares wide, six long, eight squares wide. And so it takes 48 of them. There's 42 in here, but um, so that's not quite enough to do this if you want it to fit this size pillow. And this is a 12 by 16 inch pillow. Another thing it allowed me to do with the, with the two uh, packs here is to pick and choose the colors I wanted because um, you know it allowed me to have more reds and blues in here since there are so many lighter ones in there. But you can do it any way you want. You can make it uh, with fewer of them and then just put a border around it to make it fit that size pillow. Okay, I wanna give you a couple other ideas. Um, this is something we made 
with some of our Christmas fabrics and just made a simple Christmas tree skirt out of a triangle ruler and then uh, did some simple quilting on here with the backing and the batting in between and then did the binding on here the same way I did on the quilt. I did uh, two layers on the back all the way around the circle cut a slit up, went up here, around, and so forth, and then did the same thing, repeated the whole process on the top side. Throw it in the washing machine and watch it bloom. So it looks very cute for a Christmas tree skirt. Another thing that's been pretty popular is this baby quilt here made out of a waffle cloth fabric. And the way this is made is you cut your fabric in strips, long strips, sew the, the uh, the blooming bias strips on here all the way across then you're going to cut your fabric into squares and then you sew the squares together going in alternating directions there is um, a great video done by an, uh, Nanette on the, on YouTube on how to do this and also uh, we'll give you a link to the instructions for it on our website these are her instructions, but she gives permission to share those free of charge, but you can uh, find her video on there and she gives real good directions on how to do that. You don't have to do it on waffle cloth. You could do it on anything you wanted and still do the same technique with sewing the, the lines on there and then cutting them up and alternating them. So it does make a little bit heavier quilt with that. Another thing that people sometimes do will take their their um, strips, maybe the narrower one, it depends what you're doing. And you can kind of go around shapes and just sew it on around a shape like that. Whether it's an animal like this or big flowers, or you could uh, do letters or just spell out something, maybe spell out a child's name, put it on the quilt or on a pillow. So there are a lot of things you can do with that. Thank you for watching the video. Um, I've enjoyed showing this to you. I hope you enjoy making this like I do. And um, we carry all of the uh, chenille colors here at Prairie Point. Uh, if there's anything you need, uh, we should have links to them here below the video.